What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome back to my Unreal Engine Beginner's Guide. If you want to check out the entire series, you can find the link in the description where you can find all of the videos in the Blueprints Basics for Beginners, where you can check them all out in the correct order. And also before we start, do not hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel for more awesome game development content. And without further ado, let us get started. So in this part we are going to be checking out variables and variable types and you might be wondering what the hell are variables? Well variables are the base of every single programming language and blueprints are basically a programming language on their own. So variables are values that you can set and you can just do stuff based on these values. So we are going to be checking them out one by one. But first, we are going to be creating a new blueprint actor, and I'm going to call this one Time Bomb. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to add a mesh. So we are just going to add a sphere. So it's like a circle, and we can just go to the material and choose something red because it's a bomb. And yeah, this is fine the way it is. So variables are variables area is over here you can press this button to add a variable so you just have to plus and it should create a new var so over here we can create for example we can call this one enabled so this variable is the first type which is a boolean so the boolean variable should hold one of two values it's either false or true and if you come over here and take a look you can see that enabled is currently false if you check it it will become true but we are just going to keep it false for now now we want to add another variable and this variable we are going to call it time to detonate and time to detonate is not going to be a boolean because it's not either true or false it's going to be a different type of variable so if you go over here you can see that we have lots of variable types we have byte integer integer 64 float double name string text vector rotator and transform we are going to be checking most of them out and we also have other types that we are not going to be checking out also there are a few here that i'm just not going to mention for now because you know you are beginners so first of all let's check out the float so floats are a number like a value of numbers so currently it's 0, 0.0 you can go here and change it and it can be either 0 point something or 1 point something or any number point something so for example we can make it 10.5 so the time to detonate is 10.5 so that's fine let's just go and add another one so actually let's add it from here and what variable type should we use yeah let's use a name so names are variables that contain text and names are just are just text basically but we do have multiple types of variables that are text so names are just you know better used for names strings are also text but they are different we are just gonna use a name for now or no a string let's use a string so this string we are gonna call it bomb name which is fine and then we are going to create another variable this variable is going to be called bomb level so for example this bomb is actually an enemy similar to the bombs in final fantasy but hey who cares uh, anyway um this bomb level we are going to be choosing the type integer so integers are basically similar to the floats that we have just learned about which are um numbers but integers are actually solid numbers they are not something point something they are just a solid number one or two or three or four 
you do not have 1.5 or something like that. So yeah, this is used for things that are solid numbers and they are never something point something. For example, character levels. They are always level one, level two for RPGs, I mean. So yeah, this is what it's used for. Also, some people use integers for health. It's fine really, but if you have like huge, like if you have a health bar, your health is actually gonna just go very fast in the health bar if you are using integers rather than floats. So keep that in mind. Now, other than that, what we can do is we can learn the last few because we are we do not need any more variables for this um, actor. So, for example, we have vectors, rotators, and transform. Yeah, the others over here do not matter. So vectors are basically, it's a value of three numbers. So if you set the vector over here, you can see that it is three numbers. And if you have learned the basics that are outside blueprints, you do know that if you go to the details panel, window, details, you can see that every actor has a value of three numbers, X, Y, and Z. So it's usually always like that. For example, you can go back to your blueprint and you can get actor location. And you can split it. So right click, split struck pin, and you can see that it is actually three numbers. So each vector contains three floats and vectors are compatible with other vectors. So you can actually con connect them. And other than that, we do have a different type that we want to learn today, which is the transform. So if you change it to a transform and delete this one and this transform, if you do not have it, just get it. Let's just delete this one. You can see that every transform, if you right click and split it, it is location, rotation, and scale. So again, in the basics, you learn that you have location, rotation, and scale. So this is them in variable form. And for example, you can get an actor's transform and just do lots of stuff with it, with both of them together. So yeah, there is that to keep in mind. But anyway, let's just not waste too much time on that and get back to it later. For now, we want to check out the ones that we currently have. So we have learned both the event we can play and the event tick. So we are going to be creating a very quick line of code with them. So event begin play right when we begin our, we are going to be getting enabled. We are going to be checking if we have it enabled. So you just drag it, get enabled. Then you right click to get the node browser. Then you search for a branch. So a branch is a question that is often used with variables. Is something true or false? So currently we just connect it to the condition and we check if enabled is true or false. If enabled is true, then we get the time to detonate and this time to detonate we are gonna be actually no yeah wait let's just wait for that just connect the branch to the event begin play and the time to detonate you actually want to drag it and you want to set it and you also want to drag it and you want to get it and then you want to drag out of the get type minus and you have this one which is subtract or you can actually make another one and instead you can choose decrement float which should just decrease one instead of you know you having to decrease the value by yourself so with this um, node you can decrease it every single time you can decrease it a amount that you want it can be either one or two or three or instead of that you know this one you're gonna have to connect it like this but if you only want to decrease one then you can just use the decrement which is this one so you just connect it like this and connect it to true so if enabled is true, if the time bomb is enabled, we are going to decrease the time to detonate. 
and then we are gonna we're gonna get another branch so right click branch and connect it like this now if the time to detonate is actually zero or less what we want to do is we want to just quit the game or destroy our player or actually no let's just quit the game so anyway from that um, this is the input and this is the output so this is the result this is what hap what the time to detonate is after you decrease one from it after you subtract one from it so this one you just drag out of it and then you type less than or equal to so if it's less than or equal to zero it's going to be the condition and this is how you use float variables with branches and conditions so yeah there is that to keep in mind this is like something very very important that you just have to learn so anyway if it is less than or equal to zero if that is true we will quit game and if it's not if it's not true then we are going to delay for one second so every single second we are going to be going back to the first line of code or you know to the beginning of the line of code and just checking again if it's enabled so that i think should be perfect currently our time to detonate is 10.5 but i'm actually going to make it 5 and i'm going to compile so I think that should be fine let's just go over it again when the game begins this happens only once we check if it's enabled we check we decrease one out of time to detonate and then we check if it's still more than zero or you know no if it's less than zero or not and then if if it really is equal to zero or less than zero we quit the game and if it's not less than zero we wait one second and then we go back to the beginning of the branch and that is because the event begin play only happens once so if we hit play and we check out our code we actually need to enable debug oh wait actually no we forgot to put the actor so this is our actor now we hit play and you can already see the code running so right now nothing happened because enabled is actually false so that's horrible we just have to quit the game then go back to the variable and enable enabled then when you hit play again you can see that it is enabled it's decreasing and it just goes back now it's waiting the delay goes back decreases and after five seconds it actually quits our game which is perfect it's exactly how we need it to be also one more thing we want to do is before we actually do this um yeah actually no after so before the delay what we want to do is we want to print string and print string is basically just going to show it on the uh, preview so we want to print string the value that is the variable of the time to detonate because we want to know how much time it is right now also when we begin playing the game we want to print the bomb name so we are going to copy and paste print string and then we are going to get the bomb name and just connect it like this and this is our bomb name right now what i'm going to call it is final fantasy bomb <laughs> i know it's stupid but hey Actually, Final Fantasy bombs do not work like this. And bomb level doesn't really matter. We are just not going to bother with it. So now, if you hit play, you can see that the number is decreasing. And when it hits the zero, it quits our game, which is perfect. Exactly how we want it to be. So I'm just going to save. And this is it for this video. If you guys have enjoyed it, do not hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more awesome content on the channel. And I will see you next time. Take care, have a great day, and bye.